just meant to let's see some news here regarding the scene if there's any information what's happened or uh, clubs opening i think there's a few a few right maybe denmark or something let's see what's been going on here who's been opening this oh, it's just from resident advisor right it says how countries plan to restart nightclubs and music festivals the uk said what they shared a 60 page document of our plan to rebuild today may 11th the other day that includes a three-step plan for phasing in the uk lockdown with the first action from today the second of another the address it addresses the hospitality sector which i'm involved in it says referencing pubs and restaurants under the category of food service providers which are planned to partially reopen at the in that first stage however it does state some venues which are by design crowded and where it may prove difficult to enact social distancing may still be able to reopen safely at this point so what was any dates here no no dates no nothing so we haven't got an indication for the uk but i think what's going to happen most likely or not people are probably not going to wait around right once we're allowed to kind of have people around our houses people will probably do that there'll be a lot of illegal raves like i said before a lot of the squat raves will pop up um out of the woodwork once things are a little bit cooled down and people stop snitching on people or stop being telltales and then the other side of it i think will be very interesting is once we're allowed to fly again i think we'll see a lot more people deciding to just start you know down stick especially if they can work remotely and just go and party somewhere where it's open if you go to spain parts of germany i'm assuming france will probably be cool italy by then might be all right there'll be places that you can go in mainland europe that you can just go and party your head off and come back um after a few bevies or two um, it says here for South Korea, after South Korea recently relaxed those distancing measures, including allowing clubs to reopen, there's been a spike in COVID infections, first another club to close. Yeah, that's about that story about that guy going into a club and infecting like 40 people. That was grim. Australia here with, uh, with under 10,000 reported cases. Wow, Australia is considering reopening its economy. Restrictions around the gatherings have been lifted in some states. The Falls Festival has announced its New Year's Eve edition will happen with an all Australian lineup. Yeah, that makes more sense. That's what I think will happen anyway once everything gets sorted out i think a lot of these festivals and clubs will have to change their programming and their lineup and go for a lot more local based artists or people within their community um just because of just for cost sake right because if you come off the back of six months or so six months more six months plus right of no income no people coming in through the door no one buying drinks at the bar you're gonna you're not gonna be in a place where you can pay you know xyz international artists to come in and slay your dance floor you might need to just call in some favors to some friends and get three or four, four three or four people three or four people to play for the same money that it would get for the person to play the other guy to play um from abroad and stuff it says here for denmark borders in denmark remain closed for foreigners but museums and theaters and zoos will begin opening in june 8th bars nightclubs and small concert venues will need to wait until sometime early august mum which is again pretty cool for them I think their numbers are pretty low as well. And Netherlands is another one we will probably be interested in. It says Netherlands Minister of Public Health sent a letter to the House representative saying mass events at a national level may only be allowed with the existence of a vaccine. Um, concert halls and theatres, however, will be allowed to take pl take groups of 30 people. With the previous reservation of social distancing starting June 1st, groups of 100 will be allowed together on July 1st. It depends how depends how desperate you are to go out in it i don't think i'd go out with just 30 people it's not worth it social distancing in the pub makes no sense right i'm standing behind some little bit of tape shouting across to my mate whilst i drown my s sorrows and cider it doesn't make no sense part of the reason why pubs work especially in this country is because you know there is a lack of personal space you know talking to someone you don't know uh bumping into an old friend or just generally catching up with friends that you know and love you know in close proximity maybe spilling a little bit of someone so you be on someone's shoe having that little bantery moment that's what makes that place special having you know standing behind things or having chairs or stools that you can't sit down in it's just not the vibe for me and um, i'd rather go out when things kind of settle down for real for real so um yeah that's not the vibe but i also i'm aware that again if people do open up i think july is probably fair enough time to wait until right there's still some sun to be had um so some good weather you might have the ability to book a couple holidays here and there um the united states says um 
it's begun an uneven reopening uh, effort definitely you can see that um, with certain localities such as Austin, Texas and Springfield, Connecticut pushing to open bars and like a community eminently sorry um, this is interesting Austin especially Austin, Texas sorry because I just heard from Joe Rogan's podcast that he mentioned that he's thinking about going to Texas um, because I don't he just can't put up with having to wait until was it end of July or maybe end of August or beginning of August to go back into the entertainment industry and do his stand up comedy and whatever um, I think if you live I think for the most part, if you're a comedian and you're able to travel into LA easily or you will get most of your money on the road, it might make sense to live in a place like Texas, right? Live somewhere else and then, you know, do the road, do like a quote unquote tour, prolonged tour for maybe a couple of months, get your money, come back and just do the clubs that are local to you weekend, weekend in, weekend out. I think a lot of DJs and artists probably might, not probably not artists because I imagine if you're an artist, um, most of your money comes from the road or comes from touring so you have to go on tour and repeat you can't necessarily just play local bars and clubs you're not going to make it that way you have to play local or maybe yeah maybe it works for artists too you just do festivals right you do festivals or you do, and you do a tour back on the back of an album that you release but you then you don't you don't do a lot of you know gigs in random places same with DJs too right you do like a tour maybe inland or you do like a tour maybe of some clubs in Europe, collect your coin, but then you have a place that you play residency. You have residency at for like every month and shit. That might work as well. I'm not too sure. But I thought that Joe Rogan thing was interesting because that might, that might speak for an undercurrent of, you know, industry movers and shakers are thinking of doing the same thing. Because part of the reason why I think a lot of those guys live in LA is because they live next to the comedy store, right? That's like the, the Bergheim of the, comedy st- the, of the comedy scene, right? Like everyone wants to... Uh, perform there so if you live close to them you're able to kind of you know um, scrimp save and get in with the right crowd you can essentially have access to play in front of some of the best crowds in the world when it comes to comedy in front of all the movers and shakers in the industry so that's why they're there but if they're not op- uh, not willing to open until July which means that's the first round right then it might make sense to go to Austin and it continues here so there's a the Portugal, the Portuguese government has banned music festivals until September 30th. They've come down quite hard on it. They've put a real line in the sand and it's also getting involved in refunds for ticket holders according to the ECO. It shows scheduled, uh, if shows scheduled between February 28th and 30th are not performed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the consumer will be provided with a voucher equal value to a ticket. Okay, that's cool. The Portuguese government are getting involved in that because there's, there's been a lot of festivals that have been very reluctant to give refunds. Which I understand, isn't it? I think a lot of these festivals, especially judging by what I've read from people's Kickstarters and GoFundMe's, it seems as if festivals are like club nights, are like um, are like a you know, you just do them because you just wanna you just wanna throw you just put an event on. You don't do them to make money. It seems like for the most, unless you're just unless you're those big ones, you do them mostly just for the look, just for the scene, for the love, just so you can you know uh, call yourself the the Mr. Scenester. Um so they don't make much money. So a lot of these guys when they when they're doing their pre orders and they're sending you a million emails about the tickets being sold out, they usually do that because they need the funds to pay for people's flights, pay for the down deposit on DJs and shit, get equipment sorted out, insurance, uh pay for security, whatever. They need the money right ahead of time. So they do the pre order, you pre order, the tickets will go and then they use that money to basically get that festival up and running. So if something like this happens, like the COVID, um, essentially all that money, they've already spent it, right? And trying to get the festival up and running. They don't have any of that cash in the account to actually refund you. Um, and I'd imagine plus the fees on top, it's just a complete horror show for their accounts. So a lot of these clubs, a lot of these festival houses are being reluctant to refund. I understand it, but I'd also like a lot of them to be a little bit more transparent, explain the situation to their consumers or to their customers so that they can make a decision as to whether they will claim a refund or hold on tickets to next year because that's mm-hmm. always an option isn't it? you can always defer your ticket so that you, the, you then the festival has more room to maneuver and make some plans for the, for the next situation of the festival but i also understand if you're if you bought a ticket in good faith think you're going to have it this year and you have plans you know you change your plan next year you don't want to go to a festival again and you know the ticket's more than a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds even if it's 50 pounds it's your money in it you're, you're more than your ass to get it back i don't think you should be um you should feel guilty due to all the whole like you know save our scene bullshit like that's all media spend dollars and say if you need a refund go get it um it continues here ireland 
Darius government have got a 23 page document roadmap for rebuilding society and businesses outlines five phases and tentative time frames with the final stage to me to date is August the 10th so everyone's sort of the same sort of time in it it seems July and August and Germany has allowed for shops to reopen with social distancing measures which has been good news for the country's record stores of course and that also means for the country's spreadies isn't it um, once the spaces are open, record stores are open, people are definitely going to have loads of house raves, I'm assuming, in Berlin um, or in Germany in general. Uh, the state of Bavaria plans to reopen restaurants on May 18th. Really good news for them too, according to BBC, but there's no countrywide plan yet and bars and restaurants. I like the staggered approaches based on the localities or the states or whatever maybe, or the principalities, whatever they call them in these European countries. I think that's a good approach, especially if you have a population that isn't that affected by COVID. You want to try something different because I think it seems like a lot of the governments are just stuck right now. The, the, the easy choice to make when COVID broke out was to lock everything down and get people to stay indoors, right? Close all businesses. But now that we've got some more information, we've got some data points, this is where informed decisions about in opening need to be made some risk taking needs to be done but people are just so i think politicians are so worried about getting it wrong right because you know i guess we're in election year or you want to get re-elected or you know you have a taste of power you don't let it go so they're worried about opening up anything and just in case something happens and then suddenly everyone blames you for that thing which you know is unfair really because i think even if you're not a fan of trump and he's been saying some wild shit or you know if i'm a boy he's been saying some wild shit or not saying some nothing actually you can't really you know you can't really say it's their fault they might have handled it poorly but i think everyone's come out of this poorly right except for maybe new zealand there's not a lot of countries that have got like a b plus right everyone's got like a c and down right um in their kind of reaction and how they've dealt with covid so I don't know. I, I would like to see more experimentation as to how people reopen and how people do stuff, right? And especially again, if you're not affected in the area you win, try something a bit different. Let's see how it goes. Because um, I don't think people can stay indoors for you know all year round. That is, especially you know when it comes to the economy, it just isn't going to work out unless you know, especially if the government aren't coming in and saying they're going to support people here and there. You know, we're just going to reopen and just have hordes of fucking pret and and McDonald's open. And no independent businesses, which is going to be sad. And it continues to your last one say Spain lockdown easing allows more cultural events to take place uh, starting this month on May 11th. Out of terraces and restaurants and bars will be allowed to open at 50% capacity, and no more than 30 people will be permitted uh, to attend indoor events. So, the, those numbers are just not yet. Yeah, for the final phase, plan June 10th, the capacity in indoor events rises to 80 people, while outdoor functions can host up to 800 people in seats details click here though jesus i just don't know how people are going to survive businesses why man like you know if you've got a restaurant or a bar what do you do like it's mad isn't it it really is mad